Your friends are scrolling through short content, but you, my friend, you're here to learn. Welcome to the RS Clips. Let's understand the nature of karma more deeply. Uh, I believe there's three kinds of karmas, if I'm not mistaken. Please correct me, sir. You could uh, categorize it in different ways, but uh, maybe this is the easiest way to understand karma. That it begins with avidya or ignorance. To be in this world, we have to be in ignorance, some sense of ignorance. Like for a movie to begin, there has to be darkness first. So all our souls have begun by being stupid. Yeah. By Otherwise being you couldn't be here in this material world unless you're sent from the spiritual world for a higher purpose. And I think it's important to acknowledge yeah. that there are higher souls as well who've chosen exactly. yes. knowledge. Yes. Begins with avidya, ignorance. From there comes something called bijam, which means desire, the seed of desire, material desire. When we have material desire, then the next thing that happens is something called pap, which means an, an action which is not congruent with universal nature or what we'd call a sinful action. From pap or a, 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 a sinful action comes two types of karma. One is known as prarabdha karma and the other one is known as aprarabdha karma. So prarabdha karma means a reaction that we're experiencing right now. So for example, this body is prarabdha karma. It's, it was created according to previous actions and we're living with that reaction now. We live with this body. And then there is aprarabdha karma, which means reactions that are stocked within us that are waiting to fructify in the future. And so, you know, we might be going along in life very nicely and then boom, all of a sudden something may come up. And we think it's just like, why did this just came out of the blue? But it's already the karma that was just waiting to fructify. Since the moment of your birth. Yes, yes. We come into this world with a certain stock of karma that we'll then have to uh, live out. And the purpose of karma is educational. This is super important to understand. Karma is meant to teach us a lesson. It's not that there is some divinity up there who just wants to strike down thunderbolts because we've been out of line, but it's a compassionate divinity which wants to give us lessons through the experiences of what we call the school of hard knocks in order to ultimately elevate our consciousness and bring us out of ignorance. It's partially the reason that when you see shorts and reels with old people in them and they ask those old people about what your regrets are in life, what did you learn from life, they have immense clarity yes. because they've been through the process of the karma of that life, learned so much. Through Which is why yeah. Yeah, you should turn to old people for wisdom. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Yeah. They say there's three types of ways in which people learn. The first class person learns by hearing. The second class person, along with hearing, needs to observe. But the third class person needs to not only hear and observe, but then needs to experience themselves. And for most of us, we learn in that way. And therefore we have to go through experiences that we'll open the Bhagavad Gita and Krishna will say something like, Mamupetya punar janma dukhalayam ashashvatam. Krishna will say, this material world is temporary and full of misery. And we'll kind of read that in the Gita and then we'll close it and then we'll just kind of happily go about life without it really registering. But then when we go through a karmic reaction and we experience that misery, then we go back to the Gita, we're like, yeah, this is true, you know? So therefore, karma is almost a, a technique which unlocks and awakens us to the higher reality, um, sometimes in quite uh, harsh ways. Because we have free will, can we hasten our karmas? Can we just pull that string quicker? It's kind of like saying if you're studying in the fifth grade, you study so hard that you don't graduate to the sixth grade, you would graduate to the eighth grade. 
directly. Uh, but what is the equivalent of studying hard from a spiritual perspective? Is it deep meditation, deep prayer? And if you actually engage in those deep meditations and deep prayers, will intensely bad things happen to you early? Like as if all that prarab karma is hitting you in the form just, of a yeah. truck. Like will something like this happen? I mean, maybe post that life will be easy, but you'll have to go through some immense pain. Yeah. Remember, karma is educational. So if we've internalized the lessons that divinity wants to teach us through karma, in one sense, that karma has no more use because you've internalized the lesson. Oof. It's almost like, say there's a prisoner and they do a crime and the sentence is 20 years in jail. But after 10 years, they interview the prisoner and they're kind of like, this is a reformed man. Then they may just say, let him out. So you can clean up certain karmas. Yes. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarva dharman parityaja mamekam saranam braja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo moksha yishyami masucha. If you surrender to that supreme divinity and internalize all of these lessons, sarva pape bhyo, all your reactions can be removed. Now, we have to understand the context of that statement. All your reactions can be removed. removed. Okay. It could mean one of two things. One is that certain bad things or difficult situations or uh, experiences which you were meant to encounter, they may just be canceled out. There's no need for it to come. Or they may come to you but what divinity will do is instill you with a strength and a resilience and an immunity, which means when it does come, it won't affect you in the same way. Some things we may have to live out even once we've understood the lessons. Just like in India, they have fans. So imagine you turn the switch off. But after you turn the switch off, still the fan will spin for some time because there's a bit of momentum left. So karma is like that. We have a certain amount of karmic reactions which are due to us. And even when we learn all the lessons and we internalize it, for some time, some karmic reactions may come, which is just clearing out the account. Okay. But what's the practical procedure to gain the knowledge? slash to hasten your karma slash to clean up your karmas i have understood through reading that deep meditation is one of the means am i right in thinking like that uh what else i think you... it's a combination of the three things you said before and the fourth thing that i added before you mentioned bhakti vidya sadhana and then I added seva. So devotion, devotion, knowledge, knowledge, discipline, and service. Through these acts, then what will happen is that removal of ignorance and that awakening of our innate spiritual consciousness will ultimately mean that we don't have to experience the karma anymore. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this. It's the artist clips.